Sí. 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 Good morning everybody. It is a cold day out today. It's uh this morning it was like 13 below zero. Brendan and I came out and did chores and then we went back in for an early coffee break before we came back again, came out now to do this video. Um, I found out that up where I was logging, it's like 20 below zero up there. So I, I'm really glad I was able to stay at home today and not have to go work in the cold, cold weather. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about collars. I've got new collars and I want to talk about that. And then after we're done with the collars, We'll go outside and I'll show you the progress that I've been making with Baron, our three-year-old. Bill's collar has been getting a little bit tight on him. Baron's collar has been getting a little bit tight on him. So what I have done is I bought a new collar. Um, this is a new collar that I bought. I believe it's from a, an Amish uh, collar making shop. Uh, I believe it came from Sugar Valley. Um, but anyways, when you buy a new collar, um, I've actually bought very few new collars over my years of having horses. And I even would suggest to people that there's a lot of good secondhand collars available. So if you could find your collars secondhand, it's a lot, lot cheaper than buying them new. These new, and these are, are nice pulling collars, really heavy duty collars. These are the collars that I pref like and prefer. But so I ended up buying a new one and I put a, an old pad on. This is actually Buck's old pad um, so it's a little bit in kind of in rough shape in a little bit but that's okay it, it'll work fine um, I prefer pads that are three inches longer or three three inch, uh, three inch sizes bigger than the collar in other words this is a 27 inch collar so my pad is a 30 inch a lot of people don't like it that way and that's fine but that's the way I prefer it so um, as you can see it almost comes down and touches itself right here at the bottom but I like these big full, full pads like this. So what happens when you get a new collar, if ever, anybody's got new collars, especially these heavy duty ones, um, they are so tight and rather so narrow and they haven't fitted to the neck yet, it's very, very difficult to put them on over their heads until he starts using it and gets it straightened out. There are ways that some people um, get new collars and they actually somehow soak them into, in water and I've never done that before. But that is an option, I guess. It, to me, it seems a little crazy to get a brand new collar soaked in water. But um, some people do it do, that, do it that way. Um, so what I just generally do when I get a new collar is I get uh, on them and I get them to work. So the problem with it is when you buy a new collar, especially these heavy-duty pulling collars, too, you can't get them over the heads. So you have to do something about it. And so what we have here is two buckles on the top. And when I got this new collar, I could not even, I, I wasn't strong enough to pull this buckle and get the, the buckle out of there. So I actually had to take a jackknife and cut a little bit of the hole out to even allow me to do that. It was so tight and I don't know how they make collars, but they must make them somehow and have this connected and I don't know what to do, but it was just way too tight to do anything. Um, they also have a piece of leather right here and this is riveted on so that all stays in place. And I'm sure the purpose of that is so it stays in place good for periods of time in case they build it and then they store it for a while. But for myself, I prefer just cutting that, that small piece of leather right there and then getting these buckles so I can disconnect them so that I can put, that, put this over the head of the horse. Let me explain what I mean when we come up in here with Bill. Get a Bill. Lady. If I was to try to put this collar on with these buckles hitched like that, I could not get it over his head. And I tried yesterday, so I know I can't. So I am going to disconnect the buckles. And it allows a little bit of give to this collar. See that? See how much give it is? See how much give there is because yes. of that? The sweat pad kind of holds it together, but there's still enough give that the, the top part of the collar, which is the narrowest part of the collar, has a little spread to it. So now I'm able to unhitch him 
slide the rope through the collar. So now I can put it right on. Bye, 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 bye. As you can see, okay. it's still difficult. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's probably traumatized from before. <laughs> Bill's a good sport. So now, I climb up here. This is a real pain in the neck. And, and after, after a couple months of working, I shouldn't have to do this because uh, by that time, the collar will form to his neck and I should be able to just slide this right on without dubbing around like this. So then, I take the strap, and because I made that hole a little bit bigger, I'm able to fit that, and then put this all back together. So what I did also, this is, this gets a little confusing, I suppose, but this is a 27 inch collar. The collar he had on before was a 26 inch collar. Every time you change collars, you have to change the hames also. So because of that, I got to thinking, well, I can change the hames on his harness to fit this collar, but I could also take Buck's harness and use that on him instead. And I know I'll have to do a tiny little bit of adjusting on the harness itself, but that would work fine because those hames will fit on this collar. So that's what I did. I'm not gonna do it, show it to you right now, but that's what I did. I put his hames on, and I did adjust the, the top of the collar just a tiny little bit. I mean, the top of the hames just a tiny little bit, but I got it to fit the way I liked it. So the next day I'm in the woods, if you watch closely, you'll see that he has his new collar on and Buck's old harness, if all goes well. So let's take this off and we'll go over to Baron, and I'll explain a few things there. Also, just to give you an idea, a lot of people question new people that are uh, trying to fit their collar to their horses. They question how large of a him. collar, how small of a collar they should have on the horse. Um, there are so many different uh, opinions on how to fit a collar to a horse. I personally, I like to have a collar fitting just like that. And down at the bottom, that's what it looks like. And yes, I can fit way more than my flat hand in here. I actually can fit like, it's like three fingers underneath there if I'm going the opposite way, not the flat way. The reason to have all this extra room is when they pull. And especially since it's a new collar, when that shapes to his neck, it's going to um, be a lot less room here when he's actually pulling a heavy load. Put in the comments below if you think Bill is cute and a good sport. Because I think he is, I love Bill. So I'm going to release this now. I should have done it while I was up top. Okay. I might be able to pull it off his head with it connected, but I'm not going to try. So I have it released now. Okay. If I can get down without killing myself, and I can just slip it right off. Billy, I bet you love that. So all that yanking. The, his old collar always went on really, really hard. I didn't. I left everything connected up top on the old collar and for months I struggled to get that collar on and I should have just taken the time to do what I did here. I also wanted to say that we can put in the comments below the address to the collar shop um, because it is an Amish place you have to write to them no they got a phone scrap that they do have a phone but we'll put the address below <laughs> billy you're so cute okay come over here so yesterday i actually got all the collars situated on the horses and the harness situation horses i'm just telling you what i did yesterday actually but um so i always thought that the collar that was on baron 
was a 25 inch collar. So I know this is a 26 inch collar because it says it right here, but mostly because this is, was a brand new collar uh, several years ago that I bought for Bill. So I was able to put this collar right on Baron, and I will even right now, and I was surprised at how tight it still is. So I'm starting to question that maybe the old collar that I had on was a 26 inch collar also. Baron, get on. This does go in a little bit tighter than his old collar did. But as you can see, it's his neck really fills that collar out. I'm gonna show the front. <laughs> Don't be a nervous, honey. So since I wanted to put the new harnesses, since Buck has died, we have Buck's old harness. That's why. I decided that since Baron is going to be one of my, part of my name, main team this coming summer, I decided he might as well have on one of the newer harnesses. So I was originally thinking about putting Buck's harness on him, but then I decided since it's a college situation, I would better, be better off to put Buck's harness on Bill, which I did, and now we're gonna put Bill's harness on Baron. Now, I have assumed all along that we'd have to do some adjusting on Baron because I had assumed since Bill is an older horse and a more, you know, a larger horse, or at least his taller horse, that um, we'd have to do some adjusting. But I actually put the harness on yesterday and I was sh shocked that it fit just about perfect. And I actually had to adjust the crouper because I couldn't even put the crouper on. So that tells me, of course, that Baron is actually a longer horse than Bill, which was a pretty good surprise to me. Seeing how he's only three. Yes. Well, he's really growing good. If it wasn't so cold, we'd throw him on the scales even today to see what he weighs today, but it's just too cold. I'm not gonna bother with that. So we'll get him harnessed up. I think he looks pretty sharp in his new harness. Yeah, he does. I was able to work them a little bit yesterday in the shafts in the cart, so that's why the straps here are for the for the shafts. So I was surprised when I pulled the harness into into place yesterday, how nicely it fit. And this crouper, I had to adjust almost all the way back here to have enough crouper length to hitch it. What will you do if he gets bigger even still? Longer? Oh, this, we can, we can do something else, but for now it's, it's good. Oops. It's done the wrong strap. Okay, so I'm gonna back him out, put his bridle on him, put his long lines on him, and we will go out and hitch on the car. I was very pleased at how well he did yesterday, so I'm gonna show you how he does today. I was surprised this morning when I came into the barn. It is quite cold, but the wind has stopped. The last few days it's been kind of windy. And I've been using our heater in our tub has been giving a little bit of stray voltage out and it's been really bothering ladies. So we always take it out whenever we're drinking them, having the horses drink out of the tub. And uh, so, um, I, but I was surprised this morning 
that the tub wasn't froze at all. I figured it'd be at least crusted over and it wasn't. But I still like to, whenever I feel necessary, take the bit, take my glove off and warm that up a little bit um, when it's this cold. While Jim's getting things together here, um, I just wanted to thank Mona for the lovely sign that she sent us after Buck's passing. We really appreciate it. And um, Jim wanted to put it on our horse barn door. So thank you very much, Mona. The saying is so very, very true. And woman, man and woman. So Jim's been adjusting the lines while we were out there and we're getting the lines put on. Okay, open the door and we'll hitch him up. Ha, 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 ha,
Brenda, could you hand me my whip, please? Oops. Cast up. pleased with this progress but as, as you saw in the video we came from the barn and then went directly to driving and I did not show you pitching him up and there was a reason for that he has not been doing a very good job pitching up so let me go back now and show you the troubles I had when I hitched him up Oh, oh, oh. 
Okay. So this is a place where we got really just practicing. Um, so often when we're dealing with a horse, we, we want to try and do it alone. But there's times where it's just so difficult to do it alone. So we're going to do what we've been doing. I have hitched him up alone several times now, but it's just, it's just a challenge. And sometimes he swings in place nice, sometimes he doesn't. So I'm going to try one more time and then um, if he doesn't swing in place, uh, we'll try something different. As a matter of fact, Maybe even right now. I got them tied on both sides, so I think I'm going to try something different now. Um, it's just hard to do, and I'll have Brenda help me. But I'll back up the cart and just swing the cart in be in be from behind with the shafts in the air, so he can't step over them. So Brenda, if you go on that side of Baron, I'll back up, and then we'll grab the shafts and pull it into him. What should I do? Just put this down. Just hold it. You'll just need to hold it, hold it in one hand. Come grab. Okay. Oh, Wait, it's good. <laughs> Just hold it still. Can you get, get the shaft on this side? <sighs> Just hold it still, I'll get it. Okay. I wasn't here. Did you just do this, but he, by yourself, pull it up to him? 
he just stood long enough in the center of the shafts that I was able to pick him up one shaft, you know, uh -huh. and then it was fine. But because uh, thankfully he does, and he seems to be getting better about it coming up to him. He never yeah. does. But I can imagine a lot of horses just really freaking out over that. Yeah. One thing I might start trying is, I think the shafts are rigid enough. Let me just sit to the side while we're talking. The shafts are rigid enough that if I pick up one side, the other side comes up. What? So I can probably can come in from behind and just hold one side and slowly slide it up into him. Okay. But we definitely need some work there. Thanks. I just I just wanted to show you guys that because you know if you're you've got a horse of your own uh, and are dealing with this it's just I wanted to show you how hard it can be sometimes. Things don't always go smoothly. Yeah. And um you know if they're okay if they're getting fed a fair amount of grain, you know they kind of hyper. That makes it tougher. Um, if it's a cold day like this, they might be a little bit cold. That gets them a little hyper. Um, if they're just having a bad day, um, that makes a difference. So, anyhow, let us uh, head this out. We'll see how things go. Okay, yeah. so now. We're going to unhitch him and put him in the barn, and I'm still having even a little bit of troubles unhitching. Not the unhitching part, but he's just not standing good when after I get him unhitched. Now I know a lot of the reason for that is just because he's feeling really good, and that's a good thing. Um, but the other day, yesterday, when I unhitched him, I didn't have him tied, and I just unhitched him. He stood perfectly. I had to actually give him quite a bit of work. He uh, it was perfect until I got him unhitched. And as soon as I got him unhitched, he was just ready to go. He just wouldn't stand there for me. So I got to keep practicing with that. But today I've got him hitched, so he may be a little bit better. We'll see. So when I unhitch him, as you can see, I just unhitched the tug and the whole back strap. I'm leaving that right there. Then I'm coming around here and doing the same on this side here. But then when I get my tugs unhitched and the hold back strap unhitched, then I'm gonna release the strap that holds the shafts and then come over here and do the same here. And set it down. So the problem I've been having is he won't stand there. Um, I can, my lines are back there. If I unhitch him, pretty good chance he's gonna take off before I get back there. So, you know, this, if you've got help, this is where you have someone hold the horse until you're back there so you can drive him out of the shafts. If, they, if, you get, if he gets in a habit of doing what he wants to do and just running out of here, it just takes longer to get him over that. So you need to kind of nip it in the bud to start with, as they say. And uh, I'm not even sure quite yet myself how I'm going to do that. But uh, um, one thing I could do is just take my lines and unhitch and lead him out of here. And that is maybe even what I'll do today because yesterday he did give me troubles and I don't want those same troubles again. So I think I am going to do that. I'm going to just take my lines. See, what, see what's going on here. Okay. So now, okay. Okay. so that is a problem. So what, kept up. So I want to drive him around a little bit just because of that problem we had. Um, I know if I attempted to put him back in those shafts, it'd be troubles. So I've got to figure some way to get him over that so that I can keep it up. So that I can put him in the shafts good and take him out of the shafts good. But we'll just keep working on that. I just wanted to show you so often I'm showing you stuff that they're doing really good. I wanted to show you some of the bad stuff also that happens. And uh, that's one of them for me. Oh, habit is so important. As you notice, when I come over here, I have them stop. I leave the lines there. I actually disconnect my lines. He is so good about standing here and not moving. But for some reason, those shafts are an issue that I've got to deal with. And I will. But until we get it figured out, we could have some problems. 
Stay tuned. As a matter of fact, if you guys have some great ideas, I'm always willing to listen. Yeah, because a lot of people don't have anybody to help them at all. Right. So, it's great to have other solutions. I don't normally, but since you're home, you get to help so much out. Okay. Okay. But I think you've hitched them up twice and I didn't help you at all. Yes. I was gone somewhere. But it's actually, so there's been slight issues. So I have to be very careful and not let those slight issues continue and do something to stop that. And, and I'll, I'll figure it out. But um, like I said, if you've got some ideas, by all means, let me hear. So I hope you're staying warm today. And I know we are going to because I think it's time for another coffee break. <laughs> what do you think, Brenda? Sounds good to me.